firstly, I, I, the, 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 the mention of surplus resources is quite interesting because surplus resources presumes that whatever resources exist, exist, you know, as to be used by Pila to, you know, cordon off and determine whether, whether if I have, for instance, a billion, then, if, you know, if anything above a billion is surplus according to whom? Well, I mean, it, it, it needn't be uh, uh, coercive. It needn't be by force that I say, because you've got a million in your bank account that you need to give it to people. There needs to be some voluntary exchange. So That's if true. I want to give it off, then I should be... That's true. And, and, and I do agree with that. And uh, going back to, 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 to what you said, I was apprehensive about, like, charity is something that has existed among human beings for, you know, I think forever. People being just kind to one another. Actually, if the government did not tax people as much, I think they would see much more instances of kindness. But even, like, you know, currently the organizations like Gift of the Givers, the Red Cross, you know, church, uh, religious organizations, back to Pillar's point, right? I don't think that delegating responsibility, particularly when you are in a difficult position, because I think that you know, as a personal philosophy, right, a difficult position can either make you, you know, give you the tools to be able to solve other difficult situations in the future or merely prolong, you know, your being able to solve difficult situations. And I think that delegating the responsibility of feeding people to government is something that is quite scary to me because what does it say? Say about those people are they unable to feed themselves because we do know in the world there exist people who are able to eat and be quite well fed without relying on the government and if our solution to saying that when there are hungry people in our communities they should look for the government to the solution which ultimately has to go and tax someone who was productive take their things by force. You said it need, need, need not be by force, right? Mm -hmm. Schools, government subsidization of everything stems from taxation and taxation is by, you know, implication, the use of force. If you don't pay your taxes, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. So the threat of force. I am all in favor of voluntary charity and voluntary acts of kindness. I think that, you know, the government taxing people to do these social services is actually eating into the ability of human beings to genuinely care about one another. I am, I, 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 am, I am not opposed to people helping one another out should they want to, but when the government does it, we cannot then say that it's you know, a moral thing to do because it inherently stems from taking someone's stuff by force for lack of a better term. So I think that is a solution, right, to, you know, at the very least to how we get someone to appeal to the ideas that I believe in is to show them that at the very least they are the ones who control their own fate. If they want to, you know, make or make or make food or make whatever it is that can get them food, no one else at the very least will be able to get them out of that situation but themselves and their community. Um, I mean, I, I, I understand now that we're perhaps prolonging uh, yeah, the yeah. discussion, and I think we should cut but, it short after this. but I think an important point needs to be made here that the mention of a government needn't be uh, synonymous with the mention of coercion. Yeah. So if, if, if I say that the government is part of the solution, I'm not saying that the government should force people. I'm not saying that the government should tax you. I'm not saying that the government should, if you don't pay your taxes, come with a you know, uh, an army to your door and threaten to shoot you. All I'm saying is that the government can put in place um, incentives uh, through tax breaks, etc., for those who want to take advantage of those tax breaks to take advantage of them. Nobody's coercing you to do that. But if there is something that is going to align with your own personal self-interest, voluntarily, then surely the government can step in to uh, enforce those. Now, I'm not saying that the government is infallible. Of course, I'm not in favor of a big government. I'm in favor of a limited government. And a, the big distinction is that I'm not in favor of no government at all, which I think is the big distinction between yeah, yeah. Uh, the position that Zakes takes and the position that I take. I don't think you can say to an individual who is starving today, who is scrab scrambling to find their next meal, that what they need to be is productive tomorrow or else they're going to die. I think. Product, production should come in and it's going to come in progressively but over the long run but there need to be solutions in the interim because we're going to risk um, a, a population that is going to be dissatisfied with the current order and we need to find solutions to the present uh, way things are. Again, again, I get you, Pen. I'm not opposed to helping people. I'm saying if someone comes to you and says, I'm hungry, I cannot eat, help them if you can. 
but the 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 fact of they are having to be productive cannot yeah. be postponed to okay. a, a later date because if there is the whole adage right to use a biblical parable you teach teaching a man how to fish is better yeah. than you know giving a man fish and i think that when you, you you know when we at the very least delegate our responsibility to our fellow human beings to the government i don't think that we create a much more better society for that but yeah that's my perspective on it if there's one Thank more question, you. I think we can do one more. Yes, I am just going to ask our panelists to keep Wait. their answers relatively <laughs> brief. Uh, I know the, the limited government versus anarchy debate is one that's very rarely held amongst libertarians, uh, but we can do so at the at a, at a next event. Thank you very much. My name is Komoto Mamanyani. I'm here in my personal capacity. So whenever you have these ideas of... Um, free market, um, classical liberalism, or abolishing BE, or whatever. The question you always have from people is, how will you take care of the disenfranchised, the poorest of the poorest, the ones who can't? Going to your point, um, Pilasan, and I find it hard to make a clinical argument um, from um, an idea such as free, free market only, because you, at the end of the day, you have a problem now that you need to take care of. And how do we then convince people with pragmatic solutions today that take into consideration the problems we have yeah. while saying we need to move in this way? Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, I can go first, can go first, no problem. I think, you know, it's much more similar to what we're already touching on, really. And I think with, with pragmatic solutions, right, I, I, uh, I think, you know, at the very least, we like to act like we care about other human beings, but I don't think in the actual acting it out, we do. Because every time people speak of the disenfranchised, they speak about them from a perspective of a intermediary being between them and said disenfranchised. I'm like, if you care about the disenfranchised, then use whatever resources you have in your own personal capacity and help them. Whilst also, as I said, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. Like when someone asks you for help, you can help them immediately so that they eat, whilst also saying maybe do something about your time, you know, maybe be productive with your time, maybe learn a skill, maybe I can help you, that maybe my help is just me teaching you that skill, right, like the how help looks like can be quite different. I find that the situation, the, the, the conversation always moves towards, since we have social programs, by the way, social programs exist and poverty still exists, so we know for a fact that social programs by the state themselves, by the state itself, will not solve poverty, because like we are speaking within a context whereby all these things exist currently and i'm saying that if we already know that the, we can have uh, you know these policies instituted and we can still have problems like these then clearly there's something much more bigger than simply taking money from a and giving to b and that is when the issue of at the very least a general order whereby people are allowed to pursue their ends without harming anyone comes into being like if any if everyone was given freedom. I'm, I'm quite insistent. I, they will say I'm ideologically inclined <laughs> to a point of not wanting to, you know, change position. But I think that, you know, pragmatic solutions, are, I cannot sit here and give an answer because those are contingent on different contexts that one may come across, right? But on a general sense of the disenfranchised, I still do believe that the best way to help anyone who's disenfranchised is to give them the ability to enfranchise themselves, if mm. that's the word. Yeah. But yeah, just, just, just at the very least, give them the ability to take themselves out of that situation because no one else will, right? Because like even when speaking of government policies, these can be instituted and these problems can still exist. So at a logical level, really, you know, the government cannot solve that for us. So we have no other option, really outside of just giving people the liberty to solve it for themselves and of course helping one another. As I said, I'm a huge proponent of helping one another. I'm a huge fan of, you know, religious charities. I'm a huge fan of charities in general. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend who's here is the one who, you know, forces me to go and volunteer at times because, you know, I'd rather be reading instead of doing that. But I think that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I think that if we can, if we, if we can, you know, do more of that in our own personal capacity, I think the world will be a much more better place. Yeah, so completely agreed.